Hey, what is going on guys and welcome back to a new video on my channel. Today we are back with another league racing video. Who would have thought? It's Sanford time, PSGL. The first two races they have been voided, so the points didn't count. So this is net zero, nobody has any points. This is basically the first race, even though we already had to. So it's round three, but the first one that actually counts. And we're using the F1 World Car because there was a bug and still is on the F1 game where all the different cars from the different manufacturers have different tire wear even though it's on equal car so that's why we're using the F1 world car so it's equal a bit of randomness in the pit garage selection but it's better than nothing and we can still go racing at least so yeah we are here in Q1 it was a mixed condition at the beginning it was raining and uh, then it turned into full dry condition so it was a one shot qualifying and we were the first ones to set our lap and I felt like the grip was still getting a little bit better towards the end of the session not sure maybe I just didn't hit the lap perfectly well but we still had to get it done and get our lap in so we're crossing the line for the final time in Q1 and we move up to P1 but in the end it's only P10 because a lot of people improved and it was still good enough for Q2 at least which was nice to see and then in Q2 you can see here's my first run on fresh tires and I get onto the Tony Hawk curb and it literally oh. sends you into Narnia so yeah I was the guy that destroyed the 50 meter board sorry boys that drove on this track uh, yeah that was me my bad anyways going into the final run also another one shot quali basically so pressure was really on in this qualifying wasn't an ideal one and with this we also, that meant we only have one fresh tire for Q3. So also one shot again. But first of all, finishing the first sector, how is it looking like? I think it's not a purple one and no it isn't, but it's a clear improvement towards uh, compared to my first run on all tires. The first one was not that bad, then in the middle here I was struggling a little bit with confidence on the braking because there was no marker board anymore. You can see that we even pick up marbles on the left side of our front tires. We still improve of course a lot and we need to because Sanford is always close and it's not easy to get through in the end. So hooking up the final chicane heading towards the final actual braking zone and corner. I mean this one is also one but it's basically flat out in the dry and not really uh, worth to mention. And I wasn't sure you could see, I, I'm not 100% uh, if we are through and I was convinced it would not be but in the end it was, we were P9 with that we made it again to Q3 for the third time in a row so quality is seeming to pick up some momentum and now we are into the final uh, run of quality and here I made a mistake already here a little bit rough so not 100% confident and all of this didn't look too great I think our first sector let's compare it to our Q2 first sector was just barely faster so not really great then in the middle we did a decent job here then I think into this section again I picked up marbles on the left which is not ideal not ideal line through here then in this section it was quite okay but I, I couldn't push the throttle as much as I wanted to so we were not up for a pole run but we were still purple in the in the, f in the second sector for now there was a guy ahead of us that uh, DNF'd Jano also he had a brake failure like literally his brake fell apart and I knew okay this is not gonna be pole position and I was hoping maybe at least a decent position and in the end it was P7 here and P8 after that. So we knew Brendan had a 5 grip penalty so he's dropping behind us. Jano is not gonna start because his pedals literally don't work anymore. So we gain a position at the start already. Pretty decent start behind us with Philip Preschnade on soft so compared to him on hard tires we had a really good start. He sends it around the outside but can't make it stick. Runs a bit wide. There's a collision behind us between Brendan and him. And um, yeah, we did a decent job initially to keep everything clean up into P6. 
And now our task is to stay with the guys ahead. There were a few soft runners, there were a few medium runners. I think Bari started on the mediums, Otis was on the softs. I'm not sure about Moreno, if Moreno was also on the softs or on the mediums, but usually the McLaren drivers, McLaren devs and McLaren drivers, they are usually on different compounds. And it looks to me like he's on mediums. Luke Smith, I'm not sure. Istvan ahead of us is the only guy if I am correct on hearts, Luke Smith looks a bit like a soft runner from this angle, but I'm not 100% sure. So yeah, lap one looking alright, Moreno does a few mistakes here and there, but to be fair, sometimes it's just a bit hard in lap one to manage the traffic, look behind, see where everyone is and uh, still focus on the guy's head. You could see he had a few snaps here and there. Not sure if Otis is gonna attack him, I think he is because he's on different tires. Yeah, there you go, Moreno is on mediums, so confirmed. We are the second hard runner behind Eastvan and behind of us there was another McLaren driver on softs and of course he knows he needs to make his way through. It's Wilson Hughes, uh, the guy knows exactly what strategy he's running so it's important to make progress but I knew about it and that's why I wanted to help hold him up and at least give it a shot but here I realize okay he's pushing we are pushing we are at least in the slipstream we don't have to use that much ERS he's getting fully alongside even ahead of us into the braking but we break late super clean fight no wheel banging no nothing we keep it another bit side by side little contact there but nothing bad and we manage to stay ahead of Wilson because the bank corner usually uh, leads into well, the lead if you are in on the inside and with that we kept him behind. We had to use a lot of ERS, we are on 62 but there you can see in lap 8 chaos unfolded and we managed a great way to get back to the front guys and also recover ERS. So I was fully in control of the pace and uh, at this point I was sure if this continues like that I'm definitely gonna win the race because our tire wear is just really good right now. Our ERS is full, like I can manage it however I want and I could see Bari doing mistakes, he's also on mediums, his mediums are gonna drop more and more soon whilst the hearts are gonna get more and more consistent so they are either gonna pit soon or they are gonna suffer a little bit in the stint so now I know okay we have full ERS, Bari got attacked a lot so he probably isn't and so we use the opportunity to attack him, use the battery and you can see we're down to 70%, fake a move and this actually upsets Bari into turn 1, he thought we would go for it, we don't and then there's the weirdest contact ever and we lose our front wing which leads into a vicious safety car, we have to pit, get a new wing, we're also going for the medium tire and uh, yeah we're gonna analyze that collision at the end. Before you make any judgments I don't think it was Bari's fault, it was literally the game, lag bubble and the weird contact model that we currently have in the game. Um, a bit unfortunate and if anyone's to blame there in that situation it's probably more on me in the end it was a racing incident and uh, yeah no no bad blood between Bari and I um, just unfortunate I think without that incident we were definitely up for winning the race and now we are just trying to make our way through you could see Dylan Warren he has pitted and in lap 18 he actually caught to the back of us now trying to get past I didn't understand why he did wanted to do it here already I mean yeah, we were slower than him, but either you commit to it and go by it with your ERS or you do not and wait out, which uh, he kind of did, but kind of didn't. So he was, maybe he just wanted to put a bit of pressure on us, but I think it lost us a little bit more time than anything else. Even here, another 10th loss compared to Wilson, but of course he's also on fresher mediums. Now Dylan is going by and he gives me a little DRS check. <laughs> And we are just trying to keep up with Dylan as long as I can and I know okay this lap is probably I don't want to spend my full ears I still used a bit to stay with him because my tires were so much older and the difference is quite big on Sanford if you pit early or pit late we get a big 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 tire advantage in the end so yeah Louis Welsh also pitted for hearts behind us he's actually on a gamepad and uh, now the same thing, I'm just trying to stick with him as long as I can. Maybe we can catch up to Dylan at least and uh, if there's any kind of chaos we could benefit from it. So lap 27, we can see he's flashing, we are also close to flashing and we still make it barely into the DRS. Not for the last time, we actually do it once more. So we get it on this straight and also on the back straight. and. Uh, on the start finish straight and you can see they are fighting ahead so I was thinking okay maybe we had no ERS anymore and in lap 29 
It was looking pretty bad, but Tom mainly retired from the session. And we have a safety car. He crashed right ahead of us there on this trade. And this put us back at least into the mix. I know we were P15. But anyways, there is a chance. We put on some of our old softs and a restart in lap 31. We're just trying to chill, okay? I know there's gonna be chaos. I know um, there's opportunities. There were also a few people pitting for interest because the, the weather was supposed to rain and the rain is also gonna kick in soon. But they were gambling. Maybe it's already kicking in throughout the safety car and then it's gonna be better on interest. So there were a few inter runners. So there is a huge chance for us to get into a point scoring position. So for example, Fabrizio already on interest. You can see he's struggling. Makes a bit of contact with Louis. And then there's another bit of contact and we just go by. Now we have to make sure we stick with the front runners. There's another intermediate, which is Luke Smith, and we can't stick too long behind him. It's gonna be really bad. I don't know, why is he flashing? Is it because he's on Inters? I think that is because of Inters, not because of his battery. And you can see the first raindrops are actually falling, and it's just at a safety car reason. I was thinking initially, okay, this might have been a mistake. I wanted to go for the Inters, but my engineer told me, no, let's not do this. Let's stick to the softs. And I was like, all right, um, I'm just gonna listen. And so far it was the right call. And yeah, Josh, I don't know why he turned to the left there. He got a bit angry, I was like, what the fuck? Maybe he had a little bit of a wheel spin. Could imagine that on a dry track with intermediates, but it looked a bit weird. We made a bit of contact with him in the braking zone, but yeah, um, we were obviously much faster. So um, got a bit caught off there. And now again, we have to use our ERS. We're currently already in P10, so it's a point scoring position. And we don't know if anyone ahead has penalties or anything else. So lap 33, we were chilling, just waiting out to see DRS enabled, waiting and waiting and waiting until there's chaos. And Patrick Sipos and Philip Prejnir, they were struggling a bit. Patrick stayed out, he didn't pit for fresh compounds. I think they are teammates or at least they were teammates back in the past, so Sipos let him by. Which, of course, I knew, okay, I need to make the move as soon as possible. So, right here, we are going for the first opportunity that we get to make sure we are not losing out any time compared to Philippe. And, uh, yeah, move done. Now, focus is the next car ahead. Maybe P8 and the guys ahead are not that far off. But, actually, Philippe, I think, just lost out to DRS from the front runner. So, he's gonna slow down his for us now okay if i'm gonna if i want to get the most out of the situation i need p8 so he's not using anything i'm using a little bit not necessary actually but i thought maybe into the braking zone that was actually stupid for me to use ers there and uh yeah he's really close he will get drs on the back straight so we need to get a good exit and use all of our battery to at least be side by side into turn one because he's definitely gonna make it. He's four times back, but the DRS and ERS is so powerful. Combined with the slipstream, you can see he's catching and catching and catching. We're using all of our battery and he's side by side, nearly ahead into the braking, but we can cover the inside. And with that, it is for now at least P8. And throughout this final lap, we were still catching up to Moreno. I wasn't giving up. I was really thinking, okay, he seems to be struggling. We get the DRS here. Maybe he's doing one more mistake and we can do a move or be at least close in the final corner and then it's gonna be a drag race to the line for P7. So let's keep our hopes up, nail these apexes and also good traction zone. So we at least get a chance. You can see we're still catching and catching and catching. But in the end, unfortunately, it was not enough to be side by side or even close to him here and yeah with that uh, we recovered to PA which I'm really happy about Danny Bersen still got a penalty it might get removed um, and yeah so from maybe winning to this and we also gonna look at the Bari incident one more time I don't think it was really his fault it's more as a racing incident so he outbreaks himself and with that sense, I mean, he left ball, enough space for sure our steering wheel otherwise and if I don't open up my steering wheel I'm spinning here yeah you can hear it so yeah, That's yeah. Right, anyways, but guys, if you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Thank you all for yeah, the support. Lucky. I wish you a lovely day. See you in the next one. Peace.